Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome to my 38th TTM video. Today I'll be sharing with you uh, three pickups I got in the mail. I was lucky to get those, and one, that was three TTMs I got in the mail, I should say, and one uh, pickup I got through a Facebook group. Hope everybody's having a good uh, season so far, holiday season. Everybody's doing well, I hope. And I want to thank everyone first off for entering the contest. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was great to see everybody's gifts that they got, the best presents for Christmas, and to give out some gifts as well to folks. We're getting them in the mail. I don't know when they're going to get there. No in the post office. Who knows? But it hopefully will get to you sooner rather than later. And uh, I hope you enjoy the, uh, the prizes that you've won. I appreciate it. A lot. Very much so. I enjoy Christmas. I enjoy giving to folks. And you guys are a great uh, TTM community for everybody that has subscribed subscribe to me. This is just a gift my kids gave me years ago. And my youngest said, you got to put it in the video. It's just a box of Santa Claus cards from 2007 they gave me one year. Told me never to open it. 18 cards in there, including a, a Santa relic there in the middle, and way off to the right, the autograph card of Santa Claus. My youngest son said that's real valuable, so got to keep it for him. Uh, but first, a few shout-outs today, as we've been trying to do. First one is one of the couple of new ones here, and this is Coca's Cards. Coca does a lot of rips. Got a lot of good cards he rips. If you like that stuff, which I do, a lot of you do. Check his, uh, excuse me, check his uh channel out. Got a lot of good stuff there. Just starting out. Got about 27 uh, subscribers right now. Also, second one, give a shout out to Don's Field of Dreams Cards. He's uh, just starting out. Got 20 subscribers. Got an amazing collection of cards as well. So give him a look-see. Big Pirate fan, also. And number three, a little shout out to TJ Mack Vintage Cards, and he's got about 25 subs. This guy has got one of the best collections of cards I've ever seen. Recently did one in 1971, Tops, 69, Tops. Uh, he's got super collections, so if you like vintage, vintage cards, old cards, collections, he's got some of the best there. And last but not least, this is not a new person, but I'm going to give him a shout-out. He's a great YouTuber, Math Bowler. Got some great stuff. Another Pirates fan. And showed you his pickups, his uh, TTMs. He's got a great channel as well. So check all four of these guys out if you haven't. You'll enjoy them very much. All right. First, uh, we'll start off with the pickup I got through a Facebook group. It's another one of the Hall of Fame baseball cards that I had to get. Saw it. It was a super price. You know, get a lot of good deals on the Facebook groups I'm in. This is one of them, Tom Glavin. One and only Thomas Michael Glavin. It was by Tom. Born on March 25th, 1966. He's 54. Born up in Concord, Mass. In high school, he was a letterman in both ice hockey and baseball. He's also a four-year member of the Honor Roll in the National Honor Society in high school. And in his senior year in hockey, he was named MVP of the Merrimack Valley uh, League that he was in. In baseball, he led his team to the Division I North title and the Eastern Massachusetts Championship. He was such a good hockey player that in 1984, the Los Angeles Kings drafted him in the fourth round of the NL NHL entry draft with the 69th pick. Good round? Yes, because it was two rounds ahead of Hall of Famer Brett Hull and five rounds ahead of Hall of Famer Luke Robitaille. So he must have been really good to get drafted ahead of those guys. The Atlanta Braves picked him in the second round of the 1984 uh, draft, and he decided to play baseball. His major league career went from 1987 to 2008, playing mostly with the Braves from 1987 to 2002, and one more season in 2008, and then with the New York Mets from 2003 to 2007. He had 305 wins, 203 losses, at a 3.54 ERA, 2,607 strikeouts altogether. Uh, his first few years in the major leagues didn't go so well. From 1987 to 1990, he was 33 and 43. 1988 alone, he lost 17 games. 
But those were some really bad Atlanta teams. Before 1991, the magical year that turned it all around. Turned it around for Glavin, too. He won 20 games that year. Had a 2.55 ERA. It was his first of three consecutive 20-win seasons. And he also got the Cy Young that year as well. His first of two. Glavin wound up pitching in five World Series with the Braves. 1991, when they lost to the Twins, and a great one. 1992, when they lost to the Jays, the Toronto Blue Jays. And 1995, when they um, beat the Cleveland Indians. 1996, when they lost to my New York Yankees. And 1999, when they lost to my New York Yankees. So, sorry, Braves fans. Uh, But Glavin was a great pitcher. And after the uh, 2002 season, the Atlanta Braves refused to guarantee a third year on a contract for Glavin, and he was a little upset. So he signed with the New York Mets, signed a four-year deal for $42.5 million. And he pitched with the Mets, as I said, till uh, 2007. On September 5, 2007, at Wrigley Field against the Chicago Cubs on ESPN's Sunday night game, he won his 300th baseball game. Uh, he also, in that game, went one for two, drove in a run, and had a walk. He was the 23rd pitcher to win 300 games and the fifth left-hander to do it. Uh, he was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2014 on his first ballot. He's also a member of the Atlanta Braves Hall of Fame. And uh, he had his number 47 retired by the Braves as well. Ten times was an all-star. In 1995, was a World Series champ, as I said. It was also the World Series MVP that year. Twice won the Cy Young Award, 1991 and 1998. Four times was a Silver Slugger Award winner, so he was a good hitting pitcher as well. And led the National League five times in wins. So this was a really good deal on the Facebook group. Couldn't pass it up. Uh, it was like 25 bucks, and... You know, you avoid the fees and all that, so that was really good. Now, my first TTM I got back today took 145 days. Came from Colorado. There was no fee, although he used his own envelope. Didn't use mine. I don't know what he did with it. He lost it, but, well, he came back. And this is former NBA coach George Carl. Got him to sign that Cleveland Cavaliers card that I got when I was young, back in the 80s, real young. They, I wrote them. And back then, teams that were really bad sent you good stuff. And they sent me a real thick stack of team cards. And he was on it, so eventually I figured I'd get it signed. He did. Took him a while, but hey, got it back. George Matthew Carl, born on May 12, 1951, in Penn Hills, Pennsylvania. Nice suburb northeast of Pittsburgh. He's 69. Played his college ball at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And in the senior season in 1973, UNC finished third in the NIT. Why weren't they in the NCAAs that year? Well, only 25 teams made the NCAAs back then. So it was really, if you won your conference, you were in. Otherwise, they don't have it like today. In the 1973 NBA draft, he was selected in the fourth round with the 66th pick by the New York Knicks. But he decided to play in the ABA and signed with the San Antonio Spurs. His career went from 1973 to 1978 as a point guard. And he played with the Spurs because they had the guy by the name of the Iceman, George Gervin. And for three years, he was the starting point guard with one of the best scorers ever. But towards the end of his career, he was playing less and less, and he retired in 1978 and took a job as an assistant coach with the San Antonio Spurs. Eventually, he went on to coach the Montana Golden Nuggets, which was back in the CBA and the team folded. Became an assistant coach with the Cleveland Cavaliers, and at the age of 33, in May of 1984, the Cleveland fired head coach Tom Nasulke and named George Carl their head coach. He coached the Cavs from 1984 to 1986 and led them to the playoffs for the first time in six seasons during his uh, first year as head coach. He eventually would go on to coach the Golden State Warriors, which they were terrible when he coached them. Coached back in the CBA with the Albany Patroons. Coached over in Spain as well. And in 1992, became the head coach of the Seattle Supersonics, where he coached from 1992 to 98. 
would eventually coach with the Bucks, the Nuggets, and the Sacramento Kings. In 1995 and 1996 season, he led Seattle to the NBA Finals, where they lost to the Chicago Bulls four games to two. That was the first time Seattle had been in the Finals since 1979, when they beat the Washington Bullets. Two teams that don't ex- names don't exist anymore. The Bullets became the Wizards, and Seattle moved to Oklahoma. Uh, he retired in 2016, and was one game shy of coaching 2,000 games. He coached 1,999. He had 1,175 wins as a coach. He won 58.8% of his games. In the playoffs, he didn't do so well. He had 80 wins and 105 losses. Won about 43% of his games. In his career as a player, he scored 1,703 points, which is about 6.5 a a game. 369 rebounds, about 1.4 a game, and 795 assists, which is about 3 a game. He was first team all ACC his senior year in college, 1973, was the NBA Coach of the Year in 2013, and coached was the head coach in the NBA All-Star Game four times. He was also the CBA Coach of the Year twice. So again, it took a while, worth the wait, all that time, no fee. If you write him, expect to wait. I guess he does get back to you. And another one that came today came all the way from Texas. This took 38 days. There was no fee for this former college great. And many of you have gotten him, I've seen. And that's the Rocket, Rakib Ismael. Got him on the Contenders card there with the Raiders. And got to get him on a Notre Dame card as well. Rakib Ramadan Ismael, better known as the Rocket. Born on November 18th, 1969, in Elizabeth, New Jersey. He's 51. Attended the University of Notre Dame. Duloc. In 1988, he played on the national championship team with the Irish. The next year, in 1989, they finished second in the country. It was 1991 at the Orange Bowl. The Rocket made a 91-yard punt return for a touchdown. But it was called back because of a clipping penalty. That would have won the game for the Irish, who lost to Colorado 10-9. Colorado wound up getting a share of the national championship that year. I believe it was with Georgia Tech. He was second in the Heisman Trophy voting to Ty Detmer of BYU in 1990. Now, in 1991, he was the projected overall number one pick in the NFL draft, which I believe was owned by the Dallas Cowboys. But near the last minute, he decided to sign a record contract with the Toronto Argonauts of the Canadian Football League. So as a result, the Cowboys didn't pick him, and he was chosen in the fourth round with the 100th pick by the Los Angeles Raiders. He uh, played football in Canada and in the NFL from 1991 to 2001 combined. He played with Toronto from 91 to 92, then with the Raiders, both in Los Angeles and when they went back to Oakland the Carolina Panthers, and finished up with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Toronto Argonauts were purchased by Bruce McNall, also with his partners Wayne Gretzky, yes, the one and only, and John Candy, the actor. He was signed for a record contract for four years, $18.2 million. Back then, they had a salary, they still had a salary cap in Canada like they do today, and uh, there were certain loopholes that you could get through with like marquee players and he got through the loophole uh, the Calgary won the Grey Cup with the Rocket defeating the Calgary, uh, excuse me, Toronto won the Grey Cup with the Rocket defeating the Calgary Stampeders 36-21 to he was named the Grey Cup MVP that was probably the highlight of his pro career uh, he was also a year later in 1992 involved in a brawl on the sidelines with the Calgary Stampeders and he was shown stomping an opposing player in his helmeted face he later apologized uh, to the player. But he left the Canadian Football League when owner Bruce McNall became uh, embroiled in a lot of financial troubles. So he left and signed with the Raiders. His career wasn't really great in the NFL. Uh, he finished with 363 receptions, 5,295 yards, and 30 touchdowns. Uh, he was an All-American in 1990, won the Walter Camp Award in 1990, and again was the runner-up for the Heisman Trophy in 1990. So... Got the Rocket to sign this nice Raider card, but this Notre Dame one, that's my favorite. The Walter Camp Player of the Year there. Showing what he did best in college. Turn those touchdowns. And the third one, third and final one, this took 28 days. 
came from Delaware. This gentleman doesn't live too far from me. He's a former NHL player, won two Stanley Cups, and that's Mr. Gary Dornhofer. And he was kind enough to sign Stanley Cup champs there on the cards, 73-74 and 74-75. Got him to sign those two tops cards. That's 75-76 and 76-77 here. He's got the beard. Gerhardt Otto Dornhofer, better known as Gary. Born February 2nd, 1943 in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. He uh, played his career in the National Hockey League from 1963 to 1978. Made his debut with the Boston Bruins. Played in 32 games, had 12 goals and 10 assists. But he didn't play a lot, was unused by the Bruins, and in 1967, the NHL expanded. They had an expansion draft, and Dornhofer was taken with the 13th pick overall by the Philadelphia Flyers. His most famous play in his career occurred in 1973 in the Stanley Cup playoffs when he scored an overtime goal against the Minnesota North Stars. Yeah, before they moved to Dallas. <laughs> and a very famous goal of him, you know, afterwards, scoring, kind of doing like a Bobby Orr type thing, flying through the air. And they got a big statue of him down near the sports center there. He played on two Stanley Cup winners, 1973 and 74. And then again in 1974, 1975. They made a third straight appearance in the finals. The Flyers did in 75, 76, but lost to the Montreal Canadiens. He had 214 goals in his career, 328 assists, 542 points, and 1,291 penalty minutes. He's one of the Broad Street bullies. He uh, became a broadcaster after his career was over up in Canada and then back here in the United States in Philadelphia. And in 2016, became a U.S. citizen. So 28 days, no fee in Delaware. Mr. Dornhofer, very nice of him to sign. I appreciate that. So that's it. Not a lot. Uh, I don't know if I'll have another video. Again, getting the packages out to everybody. So please be patient, especially with the Postal Service. Uh, I hope everyone's having a great holiday season, whether you celebrate again Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, as I always say, Festivus, or if you don't celebrate anything, I just hope you're having a good time. I hope you have a great New Year's. If you are new to the channel and you like what you see, please subscribe. If you're new to the channel and you don't like what you see, hit the subscribe button anyway, as I say, because you may like something down the line. Hit the little bell. You can get the uh, updates of when I come out with a video. Hopefully a little bit more... Uh, frequent if I can get some more uh, TTMs and getting rough out there slowing down but it's the holidays so but I want to thank everyone again thank everyone for the contest entries and congrats to the winners congrats to everybody who participated everybody stay safe be kind to each other and tonight we say good night to Florida